On this episode, I'm back and we're starting the build project on the Raspberry Pi field computer. This is the Field Radio Podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is John Jacobs, W7DBO, Whiskey 7 Delta Bravo Oscar. If this is your first time hearing the show, either on YouTube or through your favorite audio player, thank you for clicking and tuning in. On this podcast, we cover and explore operating amateur radio in the field. You can find more information about the Field Radio Podcast at fieldradiopodcast.org. Over the past year, I've had the opportunity to drop in as a guest on the Ham Radio Workbench podcast with George and Jeremy. This has allowed me to keep my podcasting membership active. I figure with the new year that I would restart this podcast and move forward with some exciting new topics and content. I want to thank those who reached out with words of encouragement to take back up podcasting program. 2019 was an interesting year that made putting the podcast on hiatus for a bit. I'm excited to get back to regular podcast schedule, and this is where you come in. The hardest part of running a program is finding guests to come on the show and tell their story or share experiences. You can only listen to me talk for so long before needing a second voice. So I'm putting out the call for guests. If you are interested in coming on the show or coaxing a ham buddy to come on the show, please reach out to me at fieldradiopodcast, all one word, at gmail.com. A goal for this year is to build the ultimate Raspberry Pi field computer. I've been on and off with the Raspberry Pi. In my side business with comms to go I developed several Raspberry Pi to go cases. I have been mostly off because of the complexity of building and maintaining the software side of the Pi. Well, the past several years, there has been great developments in making the Raspberry Pi a viable option for a field computer. Two giants who have contributed to moving the ball forward is Julian, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November with Survival Tech Nord, and Jason Kilo Mike 4 Alpha Charlie Kilo. Julian has demonstrated the viability of a pie in the rugged outdoors, and Jason has paved the way with very simple setup procedures to remove some of the mystery surrounding software installation. Also, the emergence of digital modes to communicate in the field has worked nicely into operating portable with low transmission power, which is a great for extended field operations. So with this convergence of contributors such as Jason and Julian teaching us and the digital modes being more prevalent, now is a good time to take up this journey. So a few episodes this year will be surrounding the build project of several different Raspberry Pi field computers. Getting started in this project after pulling a pie off the shelf, blowing off the dust, and loading up the basic software was experimenting in the shack on what the capabilities are and how would this best be deployed in the field. One thing I like to do is go on Google Hunt for Raspberry Pi cases others have built, watch their videos, or look at photos posted online, and take notes on what were some good design elements and some bad design elements. It is great to see innovation in this area and how I can incorporate this into my project. As I have mentioned before, when looking at building a go box or bag, there are five main questions to ask. Asking these questions up front helps you save time and money. After going through this thought exercise on several projects and presenting at club meetings and ham fests, I've added a question or two to the list. So let's go over these five questions. First, what is the goal? It may seem obvious to ask this question, but many times it is unfortunately overlooked. We skip the first step in putting something together based on what others are doing and forget to ask the question. So for my build project, the goal is forked several ways. So each one will need to be addressed individually. Goal number one is to operate weak signal modes, FL Digi and WinLink in the field. Goal number two is to use this computer to log contacts in the field when using different modes, including phone. Goal number three is to use the computer to work satellites, including ham satellites, weather satellites, and the International Space Station. Goal number four is to operate and experiment with SDR applications that can be used for many uses. Now that I have identified my goal for this box, the second question is, what does success look like? I've defined four parameters. First, the rapid field deployment. 
I want the system operational with as little connecting of components as possible. The second item of success is the ability to get on the air, meet the defined goals of digital modes, logging contacts, working satellites, and SDR operations. The third item of success is the unit will be able to maintain extended operations, such as a field day deployment. The fourth item of success is the Pi makes operating in the field more enjoyable and fun to operate. I'm not interested in frustrating setup and operation in the field. Now these four items may sound like a familiar pattern. That is because it follows my four overarching goals of field operations. Get on the air, stay on the air, be an effective communicator, and have fun. So now that we have identified the goals and defining what success looks like, next we look at defining what the box is, and more importantly, what it is not. It is a field computer, it is not a radio. It does have a battery, but will not power a radio. It can be charged via solar, however it will not have an onboard solar charge controller. It is going to be lightweight computing option and not a regular power hungry laptop. Putting down what it is not helps you keep your build project from becoming a shack in the box. Lastly, the new item to look at is under what circumstances will the box be used or how will the box be deployed? This new item will help you in your decision making process because a field computer in an emergency command center is going to be vastly different than a computer on a SOTA operation. So for this box, it'll be used in the field alongside my ICOM 7200 and my Kenwood D710GA. These two are not lightweight items, so we are not counting grams on this one. Also, the ICOM 7200 has USB sound card built in, so the case does not need something like that on board. The Kenwood D710GA does have a TNC, but will need a serial port to pass that data to the computer. Also, my Kenwood box already has a signal link on board, so check that off the list also. Lastly, for solar recharging, I already have in a small case a LifePo4 solar charge controller and array of solar devices. So the box just needs to accept charging input. So check solar off the list. Okay, so going through this process has defined some parameters for the build project. From this point, it is safe to gather your notes from observations of others that have gone before you and start building a list of components and rough layout to see what size a box will be needed. The goal of all field deployment equipment is to be portable, organized, tested, modular, and understood. As we work through the design and build process, these five items will drive decisions being made in the design, the build, and in the spring when things warm up, a bit of the testing of the project. So here are some early conclusions to start getting the ball rolling on the build out. Version of Raspberry Pi. To future proof the project and to get the most out of the setup, I'm going to get the Raspberry Pi 4. While I have some other threes around, I'm using those for other lesser projects, such as 3D printing or my future APRS weather station. For reasonable redundancy, I've decided to go with dual Raspberry Pis in the box. They are small enough and cheap enough that two is one and one is none can be reasonably accommodated. So two Pis in the box. This will also help in multitasking, such as logging and operating modes or listening in on weather satellites while doing other tasks. Display interface. For the display, I have done some research in the area and some experimenting on my own. There is a popular opinion to do what is called a headless Pi, meaning instead of hooking up a monitor directly to the HDMI output, you can use software and Wi-Fi to broadcast the signal to a tablet. There are some great advantages to using this option, but a few downsides. Advantage is that you do not have to be tethered to your gear. However, the downside is that if there is any issue in this process, you have no way to diagnose what is happening. I had a Pi that would just blink and never connect over SSH to even get the command line. Had I not had a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, I would have not been able to look at the boot screen, see what the issue is, and fix it. Furthermore, having a tablet is one more device to keep charged and keep running. So while the headless Pi would be a nice addition, it will not be the primary source of connecting to the Pi's interface. 
And one last item from the other build observation. The screen needs to be a usable size. My eyes are not the best, and these little 4-inch monitors are not going to fit the bill. For me at least, I will need a substantial size monitor. Keyboard and mouse. For the keyboard mouse interface, I have also found that using the headless option takes some getting used to and having to drag and drop the mouse around the screen, opening and closing the virtual keyboard, lastly the lag and response. These things, at least so far, have been a bit frustrating, taking me back to this being a fun device in the field and not something complex and frustrating. So I do need some type of mouse and keyboard, perhaps a touchpad, so a desk is not required. Battery and power. The Pi runs 5 volt and we like 12 volt, so we'll need some power conversion in the box to make this happen. An energy efficient field monitor should also be some form of DC that may need some conversion. Overall, you are really sipping, not guzzling amps with a Pi, so a large source is not needed. A 6 amp hour LifePo 4 battery from our friends at BioNO power should work quite well. I always give an external port in all my boxes to drive power from an external source such as another battery or a power supply. But the battery should last on its own for quite a long time. Field testing will bear this out on is what to be expected on processing power and monitor amp draw. Also having the external solar charge controller will allow me to throw out some panels to fill back up the battery. For the case, Looking at the case, I know I will have a good size monitor. I like seeing some of the briefcase builds where the monitor is in the lid. I know the case does not need to be too big, knowing that the basic components would be a battery, monitor, and two pies. The rest are components to support it, so a nice small Pelican or Harbor Freight case should do the trick. A flip-top lid dry box would be over the top for this build. In all my builds, I have freely drilled holes in the case to mount plates and batteries, I have no issue with drilling holes, however on this build, I would like to have a free floating system to access the components behind the faceplate easily. So this box there may be a fewer screws penetrating the box. Required components. Knowing I'm going to be doing weak signal digital modes such as FT8 and JS8 call, I know from Julian that we need to have good precise clock time on the Pi. To make the Pi affordable initially, and to fill the purpose of teaching code, the clock on the board was sacrificed, but a simple chip with a battery puts the clock back on board. Adding a GPS receiver lets the clock update in real time over GPS and gives GPS positioning for APRS and other items. To interface with my Kenwood, I would love to go native serial and not have to deal with a USB to serial adapter. So I want the Pi to have a serial interface. Lastly, having some room in the box for an SDR receiver, filters, amps, etc. would be nice to have already connected and not an add-on accessory. Dual Pi Components With the dual Pi setup, I do not want to have to build something with two monitors, two keyboards, two touchpads. So adding a USB switch will allow me to switch a single keyboard and trackpad across both devices. Also, an HDMI switch will allow me to change inputs on the monitor as needed between the two Pis. Possibly, I might look at adding ports to allow for an additional external monitor to be connected for items like field day where a second monitor is helpful for logging. Optional components. With every project, I like to throw in some additional components and connectivity. A few USB ports for charging a phone or putting a USB light are always welcome. Perhaps if room, some power pole out to run some additional external components like an external monitor. This, like all my recent builds, will heavily depend on 3D printing for the plate design and mounting brackets. This allows me precision in placement of components and ability to keep everything inside the closed box. I do not mind the occasional drilled hole in the side for a nut and screw placement. However, I continue to see the use of ports on the outside of boxes for antenna power, and switches. After my first few builds years ago, I saw the dirt build up on these external items. I moved to putting everything on the inside of the box where the dirt and moisture cannot wreak havoc on the long-term sustainability of the gear. So next steps. 
source the gear and start to do some CAD drawing layouts of the components and see what will fit and where. But having defined the project's scope, we now have sound footing to start building the box. Now I'm sure I've already made some missteps in decisions and many more are sure to come. But I hope through going through this thought exercise, these can be minimized. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is quoted as saying, We know there are knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. The unknown unknowns are the hardest ones. So I'm sure there are some things I don't even know that I don't even know about. And that is the fun part of this process. One last item that I have picked up on this idea of using a Raspberry Pi in the field, there are many items that require command line instructions. There are points where you need to break away from the mouse click and type code. I see this not as a negative, but a positive. It is fun to get your hands a bit dirty in computer code to build a stronger, more stable system than you would get with a traditional PC. So there is some learning curve to this process, but that is also part of the journey and part of the fun. I hope you join me on this process over this next year and perhaps work on your own project as we move down this road and glean some insight. I hope you can share with me on Facebook or via email some ideas to help me on our way. That will do it for this episode. I hope you join me next time where we take this build project one step down the road. Thank you to those on Patreon for continuing to support the podcast and YouTube channel. Thank you to those who watch my videos or click on the affiliate links to help fund this channel. And thank you to those who share this content. You too are supporting this channel. Show notes and additional content can be found at fieldradiopodcast.org. As always, please send me your comments, feedback, and show ideas to fieldradiopodcast at gmail.com. 73.